So uh, tell us, give us a sense, how can artificial intelligence help in a case like this? And are there ways that reliance on it for the wrong things or in the wrong way can actually hinder the correct response? Let me take those one at a time. So can it help? Absolutely. AI can help in multiple ways. One is in drug discovery and an identification of antiviral agents. Two is in mining of data in hospitals to improve treatments in real time. And three is to identify clusters when public health organizations work together. The technology exists, but very, very few healthcare workers are trained in its use. And more importantly, trained in use of platforms that can make the technology applicable quickly. Uh, can it be misused? Yes, of course. When data sets are very small or when people attempt to build things that aren't ratified, of course, uh, ma machine learning algorithms can become biased quickly. Again, an, a very important reason why training is so key. Additionally, this morning we see that the twin technologies, if you like, of AI and online, online are very important at points of crisis like this. Ken Langone said earlier, be calm, cool, and collected. I would add, be creative. When you look at drone delivery of drugs, when you look at uh, autonomous vehicle delivery of foods, when you look at um, canceling of events in favor of holding them online, uh, these technologies, it's logical to assume, will receive greater scrutiny and greater investment uh, and influenced by moments of crisis like this. Doctor, what would you say uh, are, are some of the potential consequences when surveillance apparatus gets turned uh, and combined with artificial intelligence uh, to, to be used for public health? I mean, uh, are, there, are there good circumstances for that? Are there potential pitfalls? Because as we watch the Chinese response, we've had some people, uh, I don't know how well informed they are, suggest that uh, perhaps in the early stages, China relied too much on uh, surveillance and control and the data they had, and that might have hindered their response. So wh what happens when you start to use surveillance apparatus for health reasons? This is why training and preparation and creativity are so important. At moments of crisis, it's hard to implement a system which is perfect. Using only one metric, like um, temperature or body temperature, or only two metrics, like body temperature and range of motion and movement of potential agents, um, is often insufficient. Buttressing that information with posts on social media, with clinical information that can be reasonably shared, makes the algorithms smarter and better and evolve more smartly over time. Again, these moments of crisis uh, show where the system is strained and show where training has to occur in order to respond better the next time. One thing it's also done is move a lot of activity online. So even as governments are trying to figure out where disease vectors are moving, where the hotspots are, where the clusters are evolving, uh, people and companies are figuring out ways downtown. Uh, my inbox this morning is full of messages from colleges and universities and K-12 schools figuring out what they're going to do if, if classes have to be canceled, for example. So this combination of AI and online is not only a way to control these uh, outbreaks when they occur, but also to get better and more resilient before the next ones. Do you expect us to see more uh, changes in methodology like we saw from the Chinese last week? Uh, and, and I just wonder what you think that would do to public perception of the spread. I think it's, you're asking great questions. I mean, what, what would be logical would be to see evaluations of not only the technology but also public policy. Americans aren't going to be as comfortable, obviously, with the methods that the Chinese government uses. And so you'll see public debates about how the technology should or can be used in America's you know, opt-in point of view. Uh, in the Chinese point of view, you'll see them uh, working very hard, of course, to apply the right technologies quickly. And you'll see innovators, I think it's logical to assume, come in and propose and implement test cases of technology with the understanding that the public health panic is real. This is not going to be the last time this happens. And preparations need to be made for resilience. Doctor, finally, a question about message discipline from governments versus message control. By the mm. accounts that we have thus far, the, the virus was allowed to spread early in China because the government tried to control the message from doctors who early on were trying to alert people uh, to the dangers of this virus. Right now in the U.S., the Trump administration it, it argues they're trying for message discipline to coordinate through the vice president's office. Where are the lines should, where should they be drawn between discipline and control so that the people who know the most, 
who have the truth are able to share it as quickly as possible versus making sure that there aren't all kinds of messages just floating around out there and confusing people? I think that's a great question, I, and, it's, and it's tough. Uh, on the one hand, message discipline helps prevent panics that are not productive and could even be counterproductive. On the other hand, um, having open flow of information helps with discovery. Keep in mind, the uh, coronavirus outbreak was first detected by an AI. So figuring out how the public starts to use these technologies and then moving up into companies and public health organizations is really important. The reality is with this outbreak, we have a different set of technologies available than were available with prior outbreaks like SARS and MERS. And so these governments are grappling with what is the policy going to be in light of the openness of information and the availability of new platform tools. All right, and Dr. I think, you, I think you'll see that in the public.